What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about Blender 3.2, which has been released and is ready for download. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can download the new version of Blender by going to blender.org, and there's actually a link on the home page where you can download it. So you can click on the download button to go to the uh, download page. You can also go to the what's new page on this tab, and you'll get a list of things that have changed inside of the new version right here. So in addition to this page, which gives you kind of a high level overview of the new features, you can also go to the actual release notes page. You can see a lot more information about the new features that have been added on this page as well. All right, so first off, we've got light groups. And so light groups is a new kind of cycles render pass. Um, that basically allows you to set up different groups of light as different groups. And then what you can do is you can use the compositor in order to view the light only from one section of your render. So you can see how right here, this has different lights associated with it um, across the different tabs. And then you can kind of mess with each one of them individually in the compositor, meaning you can adjust different things about the way that those different light groups look inside of the compositor in order to combine them together to get a desired result. So that's something that's gonna give you a lot more control without having to re-render. You can adjust different things about each one of those light groups in your compositor. All right, so next up, we have shadow caustics that are now supported inside of Blender. So Cycles now supports selective rendering of caustics and shadows of refractive objects. So when you look at this example file, for example, if you look at the base, you can really see the difference in here. Like if you look down below, what this is doing is this is giving you much better shadows in this view um, down below. This is based on uh, this manifold next event estimation, which they talk about a little bit in their release notes right here. Um, it's a little technical for me, if I'm being honest, but basically what it does is you can selectively enable those shadow caustics on a few objects. So what it'll do is it'll um, simulate those just for those objects without doing it for the rest of the scene, which really helps your performance when you're trying to render something like that. Now there are some limitations in here um, that you can read about in the notes down below. And so just looking at some of the details coming through the glass in this object, um, you can really see a difference in kind of those fine details in here. So if this is something that you are using in your renderings, this could really help you with the uh, realism of your results. So volume motion blur has also been added to Blender. So basically the volume motion blur is gonna allow you to set up uh, motion blur in any kind of a gas simulations or imported VDB volumes. I um, mean, it's basically going to have to do with uh, the speed of the object. So over a certain speed, it's going to be uh, it's going to be blurred. So you can kind of see that on the right hand side of the page where this over here is a little bit more defined where the one on the right has a little bit more blur in there. And the blur is probably a little bit more realistic in your overall result. So if you're doing simulations, your results are going to be improved with this new feature. So the sculpting tool set in Blender continues to be one of the tool sets that I'm seeing having the most, most growth and the most new features included with it. So they've got a number of new features in here, specifically having to do with painting in sculpt mode. So you can download this example file and give it a try, but basically what this does, this gives you a number of different tools in here for actually painting on a surface in Blender. So you can actually go into sculpt mode and you can actually paint on your surface. You can pick different colors, other things like that. And then you can come in here and you can paint based on this surface right here. You can also do some different masking and some other things like that. Um, there's actually some notes over here that kind of talk you through how to do that. And so you've got different brushes included in here as well, letting you do things like add like paint splatters and other things like that, along with the different masks that are in here. So I definitely recommend that you give this one a try. This one's really fun um, using like the smear tool, for example. So you can come in here and you can actually like smear the colors across in here, giving you the ability to actually do some like real painting looks inside of your scenes in Blender. So in addition to that, there's some other features in here having to do with uh, when you remesh, for example, color attributes are now being preserved. So again, this is more if you're using Blender for sculpting, this is something that could definitely be valuable for you. Um, so there's also some different masking tools that have been included in here. So if you are sculpting in Blender, you're definitely gonna wanna check these new features out. All right, so geometry nodes is continuing to improve with the duplicate elements function. So basically this is going to allow you to um, duplicate objects and you can combine that with like a geometry 
tree to instances node in order to create arrays and other things like that. This is one I'm going to be looking into a little bit more. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of information out there on it yet. I might just be looking in the wrong place. But um, having the ability to actually do that, um, I think it's going to be really valuable because I think previously I was using this, I was more splitting curves up and putting instances on curves. So there are a number of other geometry nodes changes in here as well. So my understanding is there's a significant improvement to some of the curve nodes that are in here. Um, so if you're using curves, it, they could be a lot faster in this new version. So they've also added some new nodes for adding named attributes to objects as well. All right, so this next one is easily my favorite new feature inside of Blender. Um, you can now add collection assets to your asset library. So previously you could only add an individual object in Blender, but now you can take multiple objects, put them in a collection, and you can right click on the collection and mark that as an asset. So now that I've marked that as an asset, if we go to our asset browser right here, notice how that's now going to show up in here Notice how that asset is now going to show up in my asset browser and I can drop that back in. So being able to create collections of multiple different objects in here, it's gonna be valuable for a lot of different things. You can use this for lighting setups or um, groups of furniture, other things like that. I think this is a great new addition to Blender. All right, so there's also a new curve modeling tool, um, the curve pen tool. This one's a little bit interesting because it basically gives you a new way um, or a smoother way to add points to curves inside of Blender. So for example, say we have a curve like this um, and we turn on the curve pin, which you can find once you tab in edit mode and you select something like this. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to basically click. And then when you click, if you hold your mouse down, you can use your control points in here. And there's also modifiers at the bottom of the page. So notice how if I control, if I hold down the control key, for example, what that's gonna do is that's going to link this handle. So you can use this in order to quickly add different points to a curve like this. You can also use that to add multiple points. So if I add these points right here and go into the curve pen tool, it's basically going to add those points kind of where my mouse is, um, kind of split between them like this. But again, you can hold the control key in order to adjust this, other things like that. So it's basically just a new way of adding curves in here. Um, I think it's interesting. I'm still trying to get used to the way that it works, but it definitely is kind of a smoother way to add curves in here if you decide that you want to do that. All right, so if you use grease pencil, so they've also added a new envelope modifier in here, which is basically designed to connect different points based on um, a certain number of points in here. So you can see how that's adding detail between multiple different points in here. They've added some other things having to do with Grease Pencil as well, which you can read about by clicking on these links right here. They've also improved some things inside of the video sequencer. Um, at some point, I might try editing videos inside of Blender. Currently, I'm using an external file, but um, you can organize your edits by giving each channel a name right here, also allowing you to mute and lock those channels. So those are pretty important if you are working with multiple channels and doing that video editing inside of Blender. Um, there are other improvements in here for the video sequencer as well, if you are doing editing in here. Then there's a bunch of other features in here as well. So um, you can kind of read through these. A lot of these are more just little improvements or other things like that, but you can definitely check these out as well. All right, so you can download this new version on the blender.org page. So I recommend going and giving that a try. Probably keep the older version on your computer for right now, um, just in case some of your add-ons haven't been updated, other things like that. But you can check those out by going to blender.org. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new features. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.